According to the residents of the two communities, their buildings, sources of drinking water among others, have been adversely affected as a result of constant blasting of rocks. Yet the contractors undertaking the project have failed to address almost all their concerns, ranging from compensation payments to the fulfillment of their corporate social responsibilities. There are some stones even uh, came to my place and destroyed my zinc and the things over there. And at the same time, we are having challenges about um, if they do the blasting, there are some uh, dust and even we can't control it. They are not alerting anybody. I was the first victim of the whole thing. I was in the bush when the thing affected, the thing happened. And in fact, it happened where I was running to, I just got to the secondary school, which was also nearby. When I got there, a whole issue all together. Everybody don't know where to attend. The students were running, falling and all that. We saw that the buildings were shaken. Later on, we realized that there was crack all along the town. The railway route that they are doing, is uh, the blessing that they are doing, is spoiling our people building and the uh, properties. So what I want is that they should come. I, I'm begging the government and the railway ministry to come for our aid. At a media tour and a press conference organized by some indigents of the affected communities, the residents lament that the ongoing railway project is gradually becoming more of a curse to them than a blessing. The leader of the concerned inhabitants, Kinsley Darko, who led a media tour of the area and later addressed a press conference, bemoaned the blatant disregard for the safety and well-being of the local people. ADV Infrastructure and Logistics is a subcontractor of Afcon Infrastructure Limited, contracted for the work. As part of their work, they are supposed to carry out series of blasting. Interestingly, when they got wind of this press conference, they hurriedly wrote a letter of undertaking, dated 20th August 2021, informing the community they will be doing blasting from February to October 2021. Can this letter be taken seriously? And a letter dated 20th of August today is telling us of a blast that is to be done on February. Does it make sense? The construction of the railway line has made it nearly impossible for most people to get access to their farms due to the elevation of the railway line. All safety and security measures in accordance with the mining regulation must be put in place in subsequent blast. All persons to be affected by this blast must be evacuated from the area and properly housed, the catchword, properly housed, until the affected structures are permanently rehabilitated. Some locals also narrated to City News how the ongoing project has seriously affected them. They lament, among other things, how several construction and mining regulations have not been adhered to by the contractors in the area. We, we, we talked about the health screening and that, that too, they didn't tell us anything. About. We are just in anything, anytime they just did the blasting, we don't hear anything, any information before blasting goes on. As we are in the Suja mine, we sleep on the dam. We don't have pipe bone water in Apigusu, which is very, very affecting everybody. I think the students especially. Now that they blasted, you can see the uh, the effect that will go underneath. I mean, the underground to affect the water which the children take. That particular week, all the children attended hospital. The Apegusu Senior High School, with a population of about 1,300, lacks adequate infrastructure and was not spared as some of its buildings have suffered series of cracks as a result of some blasting of rocks close to the school.